What's going on? I'm Larry Hoover Jr. and I'm rocking with Street Certified News. When I marched in the Civil Rights Movement, I did not march with a 12-point program. I marched with tens of thousands of others to change attitudes. When I was 17 years old, like many of you, I participated in sit-ins to desegregate the restaurants and movie houses of Wilmington, Delaware. I came out of the Civil Rights Movement. I was one of those guys that sat in and marched and all that stuff. During the 60s, I was, in fact, very concerned about the Civil Rights Movement. I was not an activist. I worked at an all-black swimming pool in the east side of Wilmington, Delaware. I was involved. I was involved in what, what they were thinking, what they were feeling. I was involved, but I was not out marching. I was not down in Selma. I was not anywhere else. I was a suburbanite kid who got a dose of exposure to what was happening to black Americans in my own city. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. What if I told you that three of America's most racist politicians were personal big homies of current President Joe Biden? What if I told you President Biden even spoke at one of these men's funeral while being a sitting Democratic senator? What if I told you that the 1994 Biden crime bill was actually the brainchild of one of those men and that Biden carried through with the plan under the guise of bipartisanship? Would these things make Joe Biden a racist? Not exactly, but let's dig a bit deeper. Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. was born November 20th, 1942 in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Up until 1969, only three years before becoming the sixth youngest senator in the history of the United States, he identified politically as an independent. That is where he met the first of those three aforementioned men, Strom Thurmond. Strom Thurmond, former senator and governor of South Carolina during Jim Crow era America, was a documented racist. He even changed his affiliation from a Dixie Democrat to Republican amid the civil rights movement and the social revolution of the early 1960s. He would not be a part of the new Democratic Party that embraced the new anti-Jim Crow South. Thurmond conducted the longest speaking filibuster ever by a lone senator at 24 hours and 18 minutes in length. It was in opposition of the Civil Rights Act of 1957. In 1954, the U.S. Supreme Court would make a ruling that shook up those Dixie Democrats, Brown versus the Board of Education. That ruling by the courts made it possible for black children to commute to non-black neighborhoods to receive a better education. Throughout the 1960s, racists like Strom Thurmond and Herman Talmadge were strongly opposed. And although their effort would eventually prove fruitless, they gained an ally in their fight, junior Senator Joe Biden. James Eastland, former Senator of Mississippi, also known as the voice of the white South, served until his resignation in December 1978. He made it very clear his views on race on many occasions. To quote him, African Americans were an inferior race. This was his reasoning for continued racial segregation in schools and other public places, a view supported by Joe Biden. Even up until the 2020 presidential debate, he has stood by his beliefs, all while misleadingly claiming he played a part in the civil rights movement. What he doesn't tell you is that he was a player on the losing side. In American politics, there have, for the most part, always been two sides. Through checks and balances of the U.S. Constitution, the 100 senators are usually split between those two sides evenly through region, religion, economic status, and their states and political affiliations. During some of the most heated debates in the Senate, votes are counted 1 through 100, and the Dixie Democrats of the 50s and now Republicans of the 60s and 70s knew how the system worked. When dividing the votes on important issues, political parties are encouraging senators to vote on party lines. 
Vote the way your party votes to ensure the win. But this doesn't always work out as intended. Now, the vote today fell largely along party lines. Every House Democrat voted to impeach President Trump for incitement of insurrection. But significantly, 10 Republicans joined them, 10 more than his 2019 impeachment vote. In the case of then junior Senator Joe Biden, his vote on issues such as intervention in the American school systems would count as a swing vote or a vote against party lines that could potentially swing the tide towards the other side. In other words, Biden was cooling with the ops too much, hence becoming lifelong friends with the likes of clearly racist senators from Mississippi and South Carolina. What if I told you that the falsely accused most racist president in history, Donald Trump, took a decidingly different path to that same presidential seat? Born January 4th, 1946 in Queens, New York, Donald J. Trump took his father's real estate empire and ran with it. Plastering his namesake on buildings, sports leagues, and casinos, Donald looked to make famous himself and the empire his father built. His first public foray into the political space, some would say, was his involvement and role in the now defunct USFL. For years, the NFL had been growing, but not so much the salaries of the players. By the 80s, some 70% of those players were of African American origin. After losing a bid to become an owner of one of those NFL franchises, Donald Trump purchased a franchise in the new league where players would be the focus. They would pay them more in line with their contributions to the league and give them more of a say on how the said league would be ran. He was fighting for equality in sports for players and people like himself who weren't looked at as part of the good old boys network, i.e. rich old white racist men. By 1986, the USFL had ceased operations and all of their star players were poached back into the NFL. However, the stage had been set. Following the folding of the league, NFL players were finally receiving contracts, even as rookies, in the millions of dollars. And the USFL had, for the first time in professional sports, instituted the instant replay challenge of an official's ruling. By 2021, this has been implemented in all sports leagues. In 1994, while Donald Trump was partying with celebrities and enjoying his newfound fame, Senator Joe Biden was in the works on one of the most devastating pieces of legislation in American history with his lifelong friend, Senator Strom Thurmond. The Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act, better known as the Biden Crime Law, in 10 short years doubled the American prison population. This 356-page document added 100,000 new police officers to streets in cities such as Chicago, New York, Detroit, and Los Angeles, and encouraged longer sentences for nonviolent drug offenders, and disproportionately led to black and brown people being targeted by local law enforcement in record numbers. The First Step Act of 2018 passed by Senate and signed into law by then Donald Trump was in a way a reversal of that 1994 Biden crime bill. Its aim was to decrease the overall prison population and reduce the sentencing guidelines imposed during the late 80s and early 90s. Still a senator at the time, Biden attempted to take credit for the act, stating it was an add-on to a 2010 Obama bill. However, he did not champion or write on the bill before it was voted upon. Given a chance to make his position known, President Joe Biden has only spoke out against sending black children to white schools and for locking up black drug dealers for life. Donald J. Trump is not an innocent man, however. Very seldom are any politicians. A lifelong Democrat, Trump switched parties alarmingly close to his eventual run for U.S. president. Trump also led the campaign against Barack Obama's U.S. citizenship, and when a terrorist ran down a group of peaceful demonstrators, then President Trump claimed there were good people on both sides. However, Trump has embraced the diverse culture and spirit of the United States in practice and policy. Trump, under question, invited the National Black Caucus to the table to listen to their concerns. He has sat down publicly with rappers like Kanye West and Ice Cube. He has even pardoned black celebs like Kodak Black, Lil Wayne, and Angela Stanton King and has even assembled his own black caucus of pastors and notable leaders to stay informed on the issues that most concern black people. 
He did all of this in the public eye and amid massive ridicule. He didn't have to. Some would say most didn't want him to, but he did it anyway. In contrast, that same meeting Donald Trump had with the rapper Ice Cube about sensitive black issues was rejected by then candidate Joe Biden. In the interview, Ice Cube details the disrespect he felt coming from Biden's camp. He spoke about how Joe Biden didn't feel like he needed to reach out to the black leaders to get the black vote. Current Vice President Kamala Harris has even had remarks for Biden's track record on racial issues. Debate moderators and journalists have in the past challenged the validity of Biden's racial record. Though his politics may be suspect, his policy is solid. Joe Biden is a racist president. Make sure you drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't for more stories from the number one brand on Urban News, Street Certified. Until the next time, it's your boy, Emrick El Guapo. We out.